Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I went to Temporas and that was pretty much it. I was there for like 30 hours. I gained about 1.6 million fishing XP. And here's what the collection log looks like afterwards. I'm only missing two things, the pet and the big harpoon fish. And that's from 1001 reward permits. And I made sure to get all the combat tasks done too while I was there. If you've been watching the series, you know that the current goal is working towards max. And at this point, I am 35 levels away. The goal for this video is going to be to get 99 fishing through fishing minnows, which is 2.3, bit under 2.3 million more XP, which is even more fishing XP than I gained in the last video. So I reset the fishing XP, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. I also reset the hunter XP as well. I'm gonna try to do birdhouse runs. I don't know if I'll be able to with the way my inventory is gonna be set up. I don't know how much free space I'm gonna have, but I'll try. And the reason why I'm picking fishing as my next activity to do, um, and more specifically minnows too, is because I need to do a lot of herb runs because at the moment, uh, Herblor is kind of falling behind, and as an Iron Man, Herblor is kind of a really big bottleneck for maxing. I'm going to switch to the Archaea spellbook because I want to use the Resurrect Crop spell. I'm going to constantly have an Eyesore seed planted. Each one lasts for three and a half days, so I'm not going to run out of them during this grind. And what this does when you have it planted is that it decreases the chance of farming patches becoming diseased by 80%. So I'll have the seed helping me out and Resurrect Crop helping me out. The Banked XP plugin on Runelite is very important because this is how I'm going to like track my progress for all the herb lore XP without doing a bunch of complicated math constantly. So we are starting off this video at just under 4.2 million banked XP. If I were to use all this stuff right now to make everything that would get me about 100k off from level 94. So that's like decent but at the same time level 94 is still pretty far away in terms of XP from 99 herb lore. Here's what the actual herb tab itself looks like. I just recently cleaned all the grimy herbs so it looks pretty clean. And then here's my seed tab. Now it looks kind of depressing, like it looks like I'm missing a lot of seeds here. And that is because all the contracts I've done on this account, or almost all of them at least, uh, here, we'll check the exact number. I have 380 farming contracts. So most of these contracts, I just dumped the seeds right into the seed vault and I've not taken out any of them since. So this is kind of like the big reveal of all the herb seeds that have just been stacking up in the seed vault. Let's take a look. There you go, it's, it's a lot of irrit seeds. I guess it's nothing too crazy, but at the very least, it'll last me for the next like one to two weeks as I'm working on 99 fishing. I'm taking all these out, except I'm not gonna use the Guam, Marantils, or Terramins, and Hairlanders are kind of like a last resort thing. I don't mind using them, but they don't give too much XP when making potions. But the secondaries are really easy to get, but definitely won't actually be using these three. I'm also not sure if I'll be planting limpert seeds and snakegrass seeds. I'll definitely like do them at some point, but for this grind, I just gotta see how much inventory space I'm gonna have when everything's all set up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take all the limpert seeds out and all the snakegrass seeds out as well. That's a decent amount. Actually, you go through them kind of fast, but you also get a lot of snape grass pretty fast too. This should net me way more snape grass than the amount of ranars I'm going to have by the end of everything. I just added up the number of all these seeds, not these two, but of all the herb seeds that I would potentially plant. And it's almost 2,000 seeds in total. And I'm thinking, I feel like on an average day, I'd maybe plant like 80 seeds or something. And if that's the case, this would be like over a month of just like nonstop being at the computer doing herb runs as soon as I can. I'll start with toad flax, ranars, and limperts, and then see if I want to add other stuff on from there. Like if I want to do snake grass or white berries or something else. The reason why I have two kinds of seeds is because I want to plant like the rarer seeds and the disease-free patches. There's three disease-free patches, the Trollheim, the Weiss, and the Hosidius patch. I was thinking maybe I should keep the farmer's outfit in my inventory, but then I'll have like the noted stuff in my inventory too. Uh, I'm already 99 farming and I don't really care that much about XP. Uh, we'll just see. Um, oh yeah, I'll also be doing contracts and I'll just continue on where whenever I get a contract from here on out, I will just continue to dump the seeds into the seed vault and not add them onto everything I just put into the bank. So. Maybe by the end of this video, we can see how many seeds I got, again, from contracts. Because I'm probably going to have to do like a master farmer grind um, after this fishing grind. Because I don't think the amount of seeds I just showed is enough to get me to 99 herb lore. It's probably like 1 to 2 mil more XP. Although I was kind of 
like severely underestimating the amount of XP, but you know, if you expect the worst, you'll never be disappointed. It's a life of a pessimist, words that you shouldn't live by. I got 260 uses of the bottomless bucket left, so I'm definitely gonna have to up that at some point, make some compost. For the limperts though, I'm not gonna use ultra compost. Well, this is a bad example because this is protected, so I don't need to use any compost, but uh, the type of compost doesn't affect the yield for limperts, so I just use regular compost. They're already protected with the eyesore. Um, but you can very easily get normal compost in bulk, so I just figure may as well use it. Doesn't really cost me any extra time or money. Yeah, I've already decided that I don't want to have the farming outfit. It's just too much. Uh, I also am going to have the small fishing net and the minnows in my inventory as well because of the fishing. Uh, I also have a lot of minnows. I have not turned in minnows. I've just been collecting them for as long as I've been fishing them. So I have almost 1.4 million of them. And it's gonna be very satisfying to just trade them all in at once at the end. I will try to do the clue scrolls, maybe. I'll just see how I'm feeling, I guess, as I get them. But I'd like to get done as many as possible so that after I max, I can have a big clue scroll opening. Yeah, I think I'll be fine without the farming outfit. Like 2.5% extra XP really isn't that much, especially because I'm just mainly doing herbs so it's like how much XP will I really get you know I don't care about missing out on a few thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand XP or whatever I do have the farming cape which is going to give me an extra five percent yield on herbs unfortunately though I don't have the angler's gloves for fish and this is what life is going to be for the next uh, two point three million fishing XP. I know that was kind of a lot of talking for the start of the video, but beyond that, there's really not gonna be much else to show. I just sort of had to like set the stage for everything that's going on. And at this point, I'm probably gonna be recording maybe a few seconds of clips per day, or probably I'll go multiple days without recording anything at all. And so there's probably gonna be a lot of progress jumps throughout this video. We'll see how it goes though. I completely forgot until now that the farming cape teleports you to the farming guild. I've just been using the jewelry box to get there, but this is even more convenient. Huh? Who's this EVS cape guy? What does that mean? It's actually really cool. It's, it's like really hype though that they're promoting him. That's sweet. Instead of making my own ultra compost, I could instead use the fertile soil spell because I did recently unlock the ash cover tome so that it counts as ultra compost instead. I think it would take longer to have to switch to the Archaeus spellbook for resurrect crop every time a crop dies. And I'd have to switch my runes around. It just seems kind of annoying. So I am opting to make my own ultra compost instead. Plus you use more volcanic ash when you cast the spell versus just making compost. Whoa, deja vu, the servers are dead down again and it's like the exact same thing that just happened a few weeks ago you can see there's no like players online thing here uh, so I guess I should probably go to bed soon. We were doing a cooking stream earlier today, unrelated to the server issues, by the way, because uh, we had already planned this for a while. But then a few hours into the stream, everyone started saying they were getting logged off RS. So I guess we picked a pretty good night to spend the whole night doing a cooking stream. And I guess there's gonna be like a two and a half hour rollback as well. So even better that I just wasn't even logged in for like pretty much the whole night. Anyways, as you can see, we made tortilla chips, refried beans, and my favorite guacamole. I apparently don't have any spirit trees planted anywhere, and being 99 farming, I can have unlimited spirit trees. So I have five that I need to plant, and I am very certain I have well more than five spirit seeds I've collected across the course of this account. But I guess I've just never planted a spirit tree anywhere before. In the seed vault, I have 12 spirit seeds, and in the bank, I have 20 of them. It takes two days and 16 hours for them to fully grow. You can pay for protection, but it's kind of annoying. I'd have to go kill Suquas and I don't really care to do that. If any of them do die though, of course, I have plenty of spirit saplings I could plant in place. I got the Iosaur seed going, I got the Resurrect crop spell, it'll be fine. Brave adventurer heading out into the world. There's a full day of fishing XP. You can see I was averaging like 28k XP per hour, which is a lot lower, of course, than just solely fishing minnows the whole time. But I have to do the herb runs, birdhouse runs, clue scrolls, etc. I had to replant my anima seed today. Um, I I did plant another Iosaur, but I came to the wiki to check out this tool. It's an herb run calculator. I just googled herb run calculator OSRS and this is what came up and this is very, very handy. I entered in like everything I have available, the type of compost I was using, and you could choose the type of anima seed as well. So I'm using the Iosaur seed and with everything that I have unlocked, you can see I'm expected to get 86.1 herbs per farm run. However, if I switched over to the Addis seed, 
I would instead be getting 87.3, so about one extra herb per run on average over the long term. The Isaur seed lowers the chance that a patch is going to die, whereas the Addis seed just provides you more yield. So with the Addis, there's a higher chance the plant's going to die and I'd have to resurrect it or just plant a new one. The resurrect crop spell can fail, by the way, if you didn't know that. It's based on your magic level. And at that point, it just kills the crop. But even if the resurrect crop spell does bring the plant back to life, I'm not going to be coming back in 20 minutes just to check one patch. I don't like stagger my herb patches separately because I'd be all over the place constantly trying to do herb runs. Instead, I would just be waiting until the next farming cycle in 80 minutes, or at least for like my next herb run. On top of that, the Isor seed would be better than the Addis seed for farming contracts. I'd be able to get more done. I mean, Kronos would probably be the best for farm contracts. Is my guy just like throwing the watermelons over the top of this bin? Like, like shooting a basketball from behind the hoop or something? <laughs> Yo, my guy's got skill. Finally, a fishing level. Feels really good to finally have the hardest level. But yeah, it's probably gonna be another like at least five days of fishing because I'm probably getting like maybe 200 to 250k fishing XP per day. It's time to check all the spirit trees. I got my farmer's outfit on for the extra, I, I guess kind of unimportant uh, farming XP. Nice, here's the last one and they all successfully grew. So it's like it's like a completionist thing, right? Having all these trees planted. And uh, this Etsateria one's gonna be really nice because I sort of started incorporating white berry runs not planting the seeds, but just collecting the berries. Even though I think I already have way more than enough white berries for what I need, it's just like, I don't know, it's pretty fast to collect them, so may as well. And this tree will be really nice for getting to the tea trees to get my favor up for miscellanea, and just all these trees in general are especially really nice for a lot of clue steps. Oh, we got a virtual farming level of 100. A great thing about checking this limpert patch is that Every once in a while, I see a crystal impling. It's like my third time in the last few days seeing one. Hey, I just wanted to show, I just noticed I hit 200 days of playtime. Uh, because the videos are a few weeks behind, I'll just show you the date in real time. It is December 14th. Uh, which is 14, just over 14 months since the game mode came out. Uh, actually, maybe I should delete this clip. I, I kind of feel like I'm incriminating myself. Whenever Charlie asks me for an iron dagger, I just go right over here and buy an iron dagger and then give it back to him. <laughs> this update's so nice. I've gradually been integrating doing birdhouse runs more and more into this routine I've been doing for the last week. And at this point, I always do a birdhouse run every time I've been doing the herb runs and we have level 96 hunter. I basically only done birdhouses on this account for training hunter. And I just want to see how close I can get to 99 before it's like the last skill that I need to push to 99 to max. And at that point, I'll just do herbivore to finish it off. Sometimes when I'm checking this whiteberry patch, I just grab the rake from the tool leprechaun and then harvest the weeds right here, or rake the weeds. And it's a very easy passive way to keep the miscellanea favor up. I have never seen this medium clue step before. Maybe I, I just don't do enough medium clues. It's probably been in the game for quite a while. I know where I'm getting my giant champion scroll from and all the over keys for when I eventually go for the giant club and combat achievements. Whoa, bro, I just realized something. Look at the fishing XP gain this video and then look at my stack of minnows. So that means it's like two fishing XP per minnow. That works out so beautifully. It is finally time. I may not be joined by Spook Dog in game, but she's next to me in person to witness. Night. Oh, it's me the next one. Here we go. 99 fishing. Congrats. Thank you so much for being here. Wow. Good job. Thank you. I guess uh, we'll go get the cape. 99k for the fishing skill cape. Let's put that on and do the emote. Actually goes very well with the, the upgrade fishing outfit, the spirit angler's outfit. Now the perk of this cape is that it gives you unlimited teleports to both the fishing guild and Otto's grotto. And that is all. I have not emptied out my inventory since the start of this video and it has been nine days of just doing fishing and farm runs. And now I will show you what I have to show for it. First off, between doing uh, the farm runs, birdhouse runs, clues, and all that stuff, I probably averaged about 30K fishing XP per hour, which means this is over 70 hours of progress, this video to do the fishing and farming and everything. That is seven zero. And then for the amount of minnows that were fished this video, just this video is over 1.1 million. And if we combine this with what I had before in the bank, I fished a total of 
to over 2.5 million minnows. So all the total minnow fishing I've done on this account probably adds up to about 150 hours to get the 2.5 million minnows. And it is time to trade them all in. How many is that gonna be? 63k, holy crap. And because you get 210 cooking XP per raw shark that you cook, that's 13.3 million cooking XP right here. That's literally more than going from one to 99. I mean, you can't cook sharks at level one, but still 13 million cooking XP from that. Oh, you know we gotta do the price check as well. Let's see. 31 mil. For some reason I had it in my head that sharks were 1k each, but that's probably like a RuneScape 2 thing, just associating one shark with being 1k. Uh, I could just add all these other sharks I had from before as well, so that's 65k raw sharks. It may seem like a ridiculous amount, but when I do Slayer, like when I do a lot of bossing, like a Calphite Queen task or a Serb task, one Slayer task like that, I use 1 to 2k sharks. So it's a lot, but on the other hand, we'll probably go through these eventually. But for now, we are set for a while for food. Well, once they're cooked at least. So with all the fishing stuff out of the way, let's go over all the farming stuff gained in this video. First thing is gonna be the farming XP, 1.4 mil. I wasn't really like doing trees or anything besides whatever I got for my contracts. Otherwise, of course, it would have been a lot more XP if I was doing all the tree runs. And here's the amount of seeds that I have left over after spending nine days doing farm runs. It was like just the right amount of limper. Oh, let me put these in here. It was like just the right amount of limper seeds too. So I went through like the bulk of them. Uh, I left like 10 to 20 of each of these seeds just in case I need them for contracts. Although at this point, the seed vault is pretty stocked up with even more herb seeds from doing more contracts. And just so you can see the banked XP is at over 5.2 mil. And I'll, I'll make like uh, graphics to put on screen. So let's cut over to that. Now on screen, you'll see that before this video started, I was at about 4.2 million banked herb lore XP. And now after nine days of doing farm runs, uh, it is up to 5.2 mil. So in nine days, I banked about 1 million herb lore XP, which is just over 100K banked herb lore XP per day, which seems relatively low considering the fact that I was like doing herb runs as constantly as I could. I was always watching the timers, making sure I was like on top of those 20 minute farming ticks, doing as many herb runs per day as I possibly could do. I'd wake up in bed, I'd be doing my farm runs on my phone just so I wouldn't miss another farming tick and to only get just over 100k XP per day. It really shows why a lot of Iron Man dread getting 99 herb lore. With this amount of banked XP, that would get me to about 9 million herb XP, which means I still need to bank 4 million more herb lore XP. And doing all of this constant farm runs for nine days just to get one mil, and I have to do all of this four more times, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> it really is a bottleneck, huh? I started with about 5.4k limpert roots, so I more than doubled the limpert stack, and I started with about 3.2k white berries, so about doubled that stack too. I unfortunately didn't really do any snake grass outside of doing contracts, but you can collect this stuff so fast. In one day of doing snake grass runs, I will get way more than enough snake grass. And before I forget, let's take a look at the seed vault too. Uh, every contract I did throughout this video, the last nine days, uh, I did not empty any of that into the bank. I just straight up emptied all of it into the seed vault. I have 183 more limpert seeds. And then for all the herb seeds, remember I emptied all the herbs out here, except for uh, these first three. But the rest of this is stuff I just gained throughout this video passively. It's a lot of irrits. As for other miscellaneous XP gained in the video, it's about 170k woodcutting XP. And then from all the birdhouse runs I did, it is 367k hunter XP. Oh, actually, there's one more to show. Um, Herblor XP from doing, I guess I was able to do one tiers of guthics throughout the week. And then just from doing the farm runs, I clean the herbs as I go. I'm curious to see how much all this added up to. And all the XP lamps went into herb too. So let's see, 105k XP. One last very important thing I need to show you. The fishing XP I have on my main account is 20 million XP. The fishing XP I had on my hardcore was 15.3 mil XP. The fishing XP I had on my UIM was 27 mil XP. And then this account, of course, I'm at 13 mil XP. That is a total across my accounts of about 75 million fishing XP. And I have never gotten the fishing pet ever on any account. And I believe it's the most common skilling pet. So it's, I don't know, I guess I kind of would have expected to get it. I really don't care about it. It's just, it's kind of like a novelty for me at this point. It's like, how how long can I go without ever getting the fishing pet? Watch that be Spook's first pet on her account. Man, there were a lot of bots fishing minnows though. Like it's really bad. There's way more bots than I, than I see real people there. But uh, anyways, I'm going to have to continue doing herb runs like 
up until the point I max. Hopefully I don't get stuck with just Herblore being my last skill and I'm forced to do farm runs while I hunt herbivore or something for even more herbs. We'll see what happens at that point though. But I'm thinking of maybe getting into prayer next video, testing out Wildy Dragons versus Mythgill Dragons. I think that'll be fun. I've been thinking about that for a while. Uh, so with that said, make sure to check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, link below in every video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.